Yo, what's up guys? T Triple Up here, and today we are talking about the final step of the Eurovision. This is the I think the end of this story. Jos Klein disqualified from the Eurovision. We all know what happened. Um and the prosecutor is not going to prosecute because they don't find any basis, enough evidence, enough proof. And now we have received word that Avrotros will not take legal action over Jos Klein's disqualification. So I think that's basically the end of this story, because if neither parties are going to pursue any, you know, ratifications, then that's the end, right? A spokesperson for the Dutch broadcaster Avrotros says that they will not be taking any legal action. Let me just make it easier for you guys to read with me. I'll just make the text smaller. Sorry, guys. Bear with me. There we go. So this is from Eurovix News. A statement released to the Dutch news agency ANP has made it has been made in response to an open letter to the broadcaster in the Dutch newspaper Volkskrant. A lawyer, Jared Sponge, claimed that Avrotros could file a complaint of libel against uh, the European Broadcasting Union over the controversy. However, Avrotros says it is not looking to become better or richer from this. Instead, the broadcaster says it wants Eurovision to be better organized. So this is the direct quote. We cannot undo what has been done. We are also not looking to become better or richer from this. We want things to be better arranged, not only for the Netherlands, but also for other countries. We have to try to figure that out. I'm just going to read their statements, okay? Of course, we have made it clear from the beginning that things really have to change if we want to be there next year. It really depends on the conversation and the commitment of the EBU to be able to come to a decision to participate. So we still don't know if um, if the Netherlands is going to be in Eurovision 2025. Avrotros's latest statement follows on from the investigation into their 2024 artist Jos Klein being dropped by the Swedish police. Jost was involved in an incident backstage with a videographer. In fact, you know, many are saying it was just a person with a phone calling themselves a true reporter, which wasn't the case, allegedly, according to many people out there saying that she was a, just, you know, doing it for TikTok instead of actually being a qualified journalist in this situation. Um, and this led him to him and the Netherlands to be, you know, being disqualified from this year's contest. Okay. Did they say anything else? Don't think so. Both the EBU and Avrutras have given conflicting statements to a group of Eurovision journalists on this matter. Uh since then, the EBU and Avrotras have public, publicly disagreed on whether arrangements were made for Jos Klein. Okay. I'm not reading all of it, because this is information we already knew. But I'm just getting the gist of it, okay? The EBU said no such arrangement existed. But Avrotras claims they have sent evidence of agreements. So clearly, it's it's the Netherlands, right? Avrotras versus uh, the EBU, and the EBU is very hesitant in you know making things right. So the Netherlands and Avrotras are taking the high road, being the better man, and not pursuing um, legal action and not you know not continuing with this um with this mess you know which ebu caused it wasn't jos klein who caused it it wasn't avrotras it wasn't the netherlands who caused this whole mess it was ebu and they don't want to take accountability for it you know allegedly 
because I don't know what happened for sure. All I know is that um, is the information that was given to us, and I don't trust the EBU because they they have been giving conflicting information also, um, and they they disqualified a whole country without having enough evidence, and it seems like they had no remorse at all in doing it. No hesitation, no remorse. Bro, it was the day of the finals, and they disqualified him. It feels like there was a person in power there, and their ego was hurt, and they said, you know what, disqualify him. And then the whole board was like, yeah, we'll do what this person is saying because, you know, we don't want to lose our jobs. <laughs> oh, man, it sucks. But anyways, guys, um, that's the end of that situation there. I think if Avrotros is not going to take legal action and if um, EBU, well, the Swedish police, the prosecutor isn't going to prosecute Yoast, then that's the end, I guess. We're just going to have to wait and see if the Netherlands are going to go back to the Eurovision 2025. And it's strange because, you know, it doesn't feel like there was justice for Yoast. I don't feel like justice for Yoast has been done. Do you do you feel that way? This is good news for um, EBU, you know, that they're not going to have to deal with um, legal actions. But then um, they don't... They don't have, they don't have, um, they don't have to respond or, or, you know, um, show any accountability for what they did. They can, this empowers them even more. You know, they, they could be, they're thinking to themselves, you see, nothing's going to happen. We can disqualify any country and we can do whatever we want because nobody's going to, um, we're not going to have any consequences from it. And that's sad. That is really sad. Um, it doesn't feel like there was Yosis, uh, Yosis for Yost, justice for Yost. Um, but hey, let's move on. This is the last of it, I think. That was the last thing I was waiting for, was to see what Avratros was going to do, if they were going to take legal action. In my opinion, I think if the Netherlands is going back to the EBU, then the EBU has to pay for their entry. You know, the EBU has to cover the costs of travel, accommodation, you know, whatever fee Netherlands is supposed to pay, they don't pay. Just participate for free because the EBU stole their opportunity in 2024. So it's only fair if they give the opportunity for free in 2025 because the admission and everything the costs were already um they were already spent it this year so i think ebu needs to waive a few fees and allow them to participate without you know having any further costs speaking of costs let's go to a message of today's sponsor which is myself <laughs> guys look we have a wish list link is in the description and a few things that i want to do is visit the netherlands for example you can help me with that wish list uh watch the 80 years war you can help me with that wish list also there's something about Joost klein too Joost klein in the live at the lowlands 2019 as you guys already know, I reacted to Joost Klein live in 2023. Then um, that was also a wish list, list that was previously funded by you guys. And it was fun. I really enjoyed it. So if you guys want to help fund all of these, then link is in the pinned comments or just go through here. Just add wish list at the end. And that's it, guys. I'm sponsoring myself. <laughs> I guess you guys are sponsoring me. So you can request a video and sponsor the channel that way. So thank you for watching. And yeah, guys, let me know if you feel as if justice was made. In any case, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Now you can get full access to exclusive content, special reactions to shows, series, anime, full movies, and even request a video of your choice. Just become a YouTube member or join Buy Me A Coffee today. Find out more, the link is in the description. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right.